What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the Called Game Show. This is exciting to slay the games today. I want to apologize for yesterday not uploading an episode. To be honest with you, the reason I did it is because by the time that Portland Trailblazer Warriors game had ended all the way on the West Coast, your brother was tired. I was ready to get in bed, and I did not have the energy to record a banger episode. So my apologies. Today's Slay the Game started very early since the weekend, so let's get right into it. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. Hit that bell if you're new around here. Let me give you the real quick pitch on why you should subscribe. We have built this Called Game community full of basketball fans that of course love the game of basketball but we have this thing here where we we can disagree on things and it'd be completely okay that doesn't really exist in the sports world well i can say something in this video somebody in the comment section may disagree we can shake hands talk about it and that'll be it no name calling no nothing it's a great community to be a part of, so hit that subscribe button. Let's talk about today's Slater game, starting off with one that I feel bad about, man. The Rockets beat the Kings. Now, a couple times throughout the history of this season, I have talked about how much I am I love watching the Sacramento Kings play basketball this season, and they don't get nationally televised games. So this was their first one. It was on NBA TV. I don't know if that classifies as nationally televised, but anyway, if you're one of the people that are like, oh, snap, Kenny has been saying the Sacramento Kings are fun. Let me tune in because I finally have the chance to. You'd want to unsubscribe from this channel because the Kings looked that bad today. It was not fun. It was definitely not the same team that I've been talking about earlier in the season. And I say early in the season like we're not just six games in. But this team looked dramatically different. And I don't want to all say it's because Tyrese Halliburton wasn't there. But it's because Tyrese wasn't there, man. He has that glue guy feature where he won't allow the ball to stick too long. He'll be getting no passing lanes, hyping the team up just by doing the small things. And they needed that today. Corey Joseph played too, too, too much. Um, and Marvin Bagley looked very, very bad. And I want to talk about Bagley a little bit. I want to talk about the other side of the ball first before I go back to Bagley and talk about the Houston Rockets. If you didn't know, James Harden missed this game. And and I feel bad because the first time John Wall played in the last game, instead of me focusing on that, I kind of turned it toward James Harden. And I'm kind of tired of talking about James Harden to an extent. So I want to give John Wall a lot of praise because... Two years without playing basketball, competitive basketball, and coming back and looking like he has looked throughout the first two games. I mean, we did see him in the preseason, but this is like actual games that matter. It's amazing, man. And and it gives me a lot of hope for future big injuries in the league and the way medicine is going and science is going and technology is going. Maybe big injuries aren't as detrimental to NBA players as what they used to be. I mean, John Wall looks as quick as ever, and he hasn't played basketball in two years because of leg injuries. The man is fast. So that's, that's a beautiful thing, and it gives me hope for, for the future. Um, I want to talk about Christian Wood, and I'm making this this for the, the Detroit Pistons fans out there, specifically my guy Nicholas on Twitter. I will no longer, for the rest of the season, talk about Christian Wood than bring up the Detroit Pistons letting them go. I won't do it anymore. I'm sorry, Detroit Pistons fans. I will not torture you by saying that, but, man, Christian Wood looks really, really good. It was a real question going into this offseason of what percentage of what Christian Wood did last year was really him. Or was it just him playing garbage minutes on a garbage team? Because he's done that for a few years. He did it in New Orleans, and then he did it he did it in Detroit. Right. And then now he comes to a team, the Houston Rockets, of course, with the James Harden thing over everybody's head. They're still a competent team, and he looks amazing. And today, specifically, he was playing defense. If Christian Wood decides to be a plus defender, it is over with. He said his dream is to play in an all-star game. It won't happen this year for a couple reasons. But if he's playing this way and his defense is getting better year in, year out, he might turn to an all-star in the near future. And that is crazy to say for a guy that his contract looks beautiful right now. It just looks beautiful. Uh, kind of a lot of the stuff that this new GM in Houston did kind of looked beautiful. Like his the the Christian Wood thing, and now the John Wall for Russell Westbrook trade is looking better. Again, only a week and a half into the season, whatever, but it's looking way better for them because they got a first round pick and John Wall in that trade. If you don't remember, so it's looking a lot better for the new GM over there. Let me switch back to Sacramento for a quick second to talk about Marvin Bagley. Um, while this game was going on, Bagley's dad, who was named Coach Bagley, if you didn't know, made a tweet along the lines of uh, Sacramento needs to trade Marvin Bagley from Coach Bagley. And he quickly deleted that tweet because the fans were on his ass, <laughs> which is which is cool. But at the end of the day, I feel bad for Marvin Bagley for a few reasons. If you did not know, Marvin Bagley's father is similar to what the media tried to portray LeVar to be. This loud, obnoxious, cancerous player or cancerous parent to a good player. And at the end of the day, LeVar kind of switched that around. All three of his boys ended up on the NBA team for a short period of time. And nowadays, LeVar don't really talk like that. Bagley's dad still talks, but he just doesn't have the platform that LeVar ever did. And his are way more toxic than some of the stuff that LeVar Ball has said. So now you got, you got Bagley's dad saying he wants out of Sacramento while simultaneously Marvin Bagley looking bad. 
through the first six games of the season, he looks bad. And I feel bad for him because no matter what he does, if he doesn't turn into an all-star in his career, he will always have that stamp. He was the guy that was drafted where he was. He was drafted before Trey. He was drafted before Luka. And then when you got Vlade Divac saying that we selected the better player when comparing Luka Doncic to Marvin Bagley on draft night, it's rough. And, and I don't know if I want to say that's because of the injuries he's had throughout the first couple years of his career, but regardless, and you're number three, he does not look good throughout the first couple games. And in this fourth quarter, he looked terrible. So I spent the way, more, way more time on that game than I expected to. Is New York Nick basketball back, y'all? Let's talk about Coach Stipper, though, because cause coaching – it's always something I try to figure out. How much of coaching matters um, compared to just the overall talent on your team? And what the Knicks have shown through this first six games of the season is that coaching does matter a lot. Culture change does matter a lot. When Coach Tom Thibodeau was hired to be a coach, a lot of people on Twitter and, and on TV and all these things kind of clown the Knicks because Tom Thibodeau is this old school coach that's going to have you running suicides from baseline to baseline, and that ain't really the way the league is going nowadays. And people are really upset or just laughing at the Knicks. Oh, they hired a coach that is not going to do anything. And through the first six games of the season, the Knicks look like a – a, a competent NBA team, and they look like a team team. You know what I'm saying? When Julius Randle's doing all the crazy stuff, hitting shots he's never hit before, the bench is going crazy. Knicks basketball is back to the point where they are respectable through the first six. Through the first six. They are respectable. You're not going to Madison Square Garden and getting a 20-point win anymore. The Knicks aren't coming to your city and you getting an easy W. That's just not the way it works anymore. And I don't really have much to say about the Indiana Pacers right now. That's a, At the end of the day, this could be looked at as a bad loss. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Malcolm Brogdon look good other than his shot being so damn slow that Mitchell Robinson saw coming four seconds ahead of time and then got the block. But um, shout out to RJ, man. Shout out to RJ for a big game. When it comes to the Thunder Magic game, uh, I've mentioned this plenty of times before, but I am extremely jealous of the Thunder and their rebuild. And today they finally got the Baisley game before he was playing pretty, uh, you know, it wasn't that great. And this was hopefully the turning point for him this season, uh, 19 and 12 rebounds. Then we talk about the 76ers. Now, the 76ers are on the top of the Eastern Conference, 5-1. and one. But in their six games, they played against one team. I think it's been one team that's like a playoff team. So I don't want to read too much into their six games. I do want to say they're doing what they're supposed to do. You know, I, I've been seeing people say, oh, they're 5-1, they're and one, but their teams, they're going against the trash. And sure, but they're doing, what, would you want them to just lose? They, are, they can only play who the NBA schedule makers give them to play. And they're doing what they're supposed to do, and it's taking care of business of the bad teams. And you know what? They are building confidence into bias. Oh, all star Tobias is on the way. This is out of the six games. He has five very, very good games. And then now when you have him having five very, very good games out of six, you look at that 34 million, you're like, that ain't too bad. Because the way he is playing specifically today, this might have been the best Tobias Harris all around game I've ever seen. Today was that day. And I bet he is super confident. And I read an article or I, <laughs> I read a tweet that was a picture or a part of an article because reading articles ain't my thing no more. But they were saying like Doc Rivers came into the team and his objective for Tobias Harris was to get him to start making quicker decisions. And you can see that. You can definitely see that. The next game, a sex land beat up on, not beat up on, but they beat the Hawks. This is one of the games where like similar to what I was saying, well, Coach, first of all, my dog is trying to get in my room. Well, coaching does matter because J.B. Bickerstaff had a plan and his plan was to tell his young guys to not. Can you, can you not? Q not to not foul Trey Young because Trey Young has been living at the free throw line this whole year and they didn't they literally did not and because of that the team didn't win I know this sounds very simplistic but it is the truth Trey Young did not get to the free throw line like he had been getting to in their first four wins and because of that they did not win and then the last game pa Pascal uh do I want to talk about Pascal Siakam bro I don't want to overreact because Twitter's tw man's is tweeting at me fidget spinners when they talk about Pascal Siakam because well, you know he likes to do that spin move. But through the first couple games of the year, I mean, two back-to-back -back, um, foul outs, and then he had to sit out the last game because of disciplinary actions. I can't get any privacy in this house. Um, it's good to see that the Pelicans were able to hit some shots. And shout out to Eric Bledsoe for hitting the biggest one. Brennan Ingram is about to be another all-star. Like, like I, I don't know if that's a hot take or anything, but Brennan Ingram is about to have another all-star season, and that's just greatness. That's just greatness. I think overall... They shot 36% from three on 48 shots. Bro, the okay. Last thing I want to say about the, the Raptors. Um, they are shooting 
an extreme amount of threes compared to like previous years. The only difference is they're not hitting them this year so far. And I'm sure that'll come around. I actually made an entire video like a couple days ago. If you missed that, I recommend going watch it. Talking about what the, sac or the, the Raptors are doing wrong and what they can really improve on. At the end of the day, um, the big man position needs to be better played by Aaron Baines. And, and Chris Boucher had a good game today again. And they need to hit their shots. And Pascal needs to, we need to figure out, is Pascal really an all-star caliber player? Is he really an all-star caliber player? That's, like, really on, on the radar right now. That's the way he's making me feel. I don't know. And that's coming from a guy that was, like, the president of his fan club. I literally have a spicy tea, spicy pea shirt with a with chili pepper in the middle because I'm that big of a Pascal Siakam fan. But through the first couple games of the season, and you think about where he was in the bubble, it's making it a little bit rough. It's making it a little bit rough is all I'm really saying. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Call game.